May the peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Beloved, it is the very first Sunday after Christmas, and I bid you a warm welcome to the service this morning, and also greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born and died for the forgiveness for our sins. Amen. Beloved, our call to worship is recorded in Psalm 1, 4, 8, and it reads as follows. Praise the Lord from heaven, you that live in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels, all his heavenly armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters above the skies. Let him all praise the name of the Lord. He commanded and they were created. By his command they were fixed in their places forever. And they cannot disobey. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, strong winds that obey his command. Praise him hills and mountains, fruit trees and forests. All animals, tame and wild, reptiles and birds. Praise him, kings and all peoples, princes and all other rulers, young women and young men, old people and children too. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. His name is greater than all others. His glory is above earth and heaven. He made his nation strong, so that all his people praise him, the people of Israel so dear to him. This is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Amen. Let's unite in prayer. Good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. Come, let us pray together as we come to worship God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to worship this morning, we come to give you thanks for the privilege of praise and of prayer and of meditation. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful and wonderful morning, the last Sunday of the year of our Lord. 2021. We come to give you thanks for allowing us to celebrate yesterday the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for this wonderful gift for our salvation. And Lord, as we ponder on your word today, we ask, O oh God, that you open our minds, our spirits and our beings into true and wholesome worship that when we sing and when we do our prayers and our private prayers and when we listen to the petition of others that our hearts will be connected to you and that our worship will be truly blessed thank you for your favor for our church and our communion and our congregation and thank you for our fellowship Thank you, Lord, that you bless the words that we hear this morning through the messenger, that you bless Rev, and that glory and grace may flow from his soul. Thank you for your favor towards us, particularly, Lord, for those who come with a heavy heart today, whose hearts are broken and who is in mourning. We pray that you will be their comfort and their strength and that you will walk a journey of restoration with them. Thank you for your favor and your goodness in our lives. And thank you for the blessing of having fellowship with each other. We pray for the earth and all that is in it that you will heal it, O oh God. That as we rejoice this morning in our singing, we 
will really praise you for who you are. Bless this morning, O oh God, our gathering. May your spirit hover over us, amongst us, in us, around us, so that we may know that you are with us. And as we face the last week of this year, looking forward to a new year, may the new year bring good news, good hope, and glory. Help us to ponder and to give thanks for the year that you have carried us. We bless you now, and we pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name, that you bless our worship service this morning. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke 2, verses 10 to 24. The shepherd and the angels. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be with all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swirling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherd stole them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, 
as it had been told to them. And at the end of the day, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turf turtle doves or two pigeons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, our theme for this morning is wise men from everywhere. Let's unite in prayer. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, our beloved wise men from the East, students of the stars, came to worship the baby Jesus, our Savior. How far had they traveled? To the east of Jerusalem were the deserts of Arabia, the valleys and plains of Mesopotamia. Tamia, the vast empire of India, the mysterious land of China. How had these men seen the star in the east? How did they know it was the Messiah's star? It is impossible for us to answer these questions. Today. Now, friends, from the mysterious east came the wise men seeking to worship a child with gifts of meaning. Gold was a tribute to a king, frankincense, a gift of deity, and myrrh symbolic of the suffering of Jesus Christ to come. Perhaps it is a good thing that we do not know too much about these wise men, for we can see them as representatives of all who have the true wisdom of the spirit that causes them to follow by faith the heavenly light that ever guides them in their quest for the real meaning of life. The wise men represent all in every age, beloved, who have been people of faith and action and sacrifices. The message for all who would be wise in this country is that we should, should see the kingdom and the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Howard Jed Carter Crokin questioned these wise men in imagination. Wise men, tell me what did you see that made you travel so far? Stranger. I follow the radiant light of a splendid flaming star. Wise men, tell me what did you hear in the land where you did stay stray? Stranger, I heard an angel song that brings in my heart always. Wise men, tell me what did you find that makes you countenance so bright? Stranger, I found the heavenly king born on that holy man. So I want and I would like to speak to a few things. The first one, the wise men of old would tell wise men from everywhere to follow the light that God gives. The birth of Jesus Christ was signaled by a supernatural Phenomena, a star. It is at his death, the earth trembled, the veil of the temple was torn, and the sun refused to shine. We should not think it strange that as it is at his birth, a star stood over the cradle with a great multitude of the heavenly host, saying, Glory to God in the highest. We cannot tell what star the wise men saw, beloved. 
it was their profession towards the heavens. Some heavenly brilliant indicated to them the entry of the king into the world. There are many events and in inward hungers, desires and conflicts which, if we were to recognize and interpret them properly, would lead us to see the Saviour, who can bring meaning, beauty, purpose and power to our lives. The second thing I would like to speak to is the wise men of old, like wise men from everywhere, rejoiced when they found the Saviour. Christ produced a joy in the hearts of those who seek Him and find Him as Saviour. Many desire the fruit of faith in Christ before they receive Him as Lord and Saviour of their lives. Beloved, you and I must let Christ come into our hearts and lives if we want to experience the joy and peace if, to all eternity. If Christ a thousand times to death came to be born until He is born in me, my soul is all lost. Number three. The wise men of old, like wise men from everywhere, worship the Saviour. They fell down before Him and paid homage to Him as King of the Jews. No person should worship that which is less than the highest. No person should worship anything or anyone less than God Himself. Worship is the greatest form of respecting God, if we petition our prayers, if we bring our songs and present our praises to God, that is to worship Him. Worship is the highest and most noble activity of the soul beloved. Genuine worship is the climax of wisdom. Only through worship do we accept the essential dignity of humankind. The wise men of old found in Christ a child, a revelation of God, and they worship Him. Who do we worship today? Number four, the wise men of old would encourage wise people from everywhere to open their treasures and press them gifts to the Lord and Savior. According to the Bible, the wise men did this spontaneously. Each man gave the best gift to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, his utmost to the highest. The wise men perceived that Christ was a baby, but a king, to whom the tribute of God was rightly due. It is only astonishing that the gift of faithfulness should be symbolized that worship to be offered only to deity. Or utterly beyond explanation is the last gift of man, foreshadowing a life of sacrifice and suffering and a projection of what has to be happen at Calvary. The nature of the gifts is most significant, beloved. Gold was the sign of his loyalty for kings. Frankincense is the gift for a priest. And myrrh is the gift for one who is to die. Myrrh was used to embalm the bodies of the dead. Jesus came into the world to die. These three gifts given at the cradle of Christ foretold that he was to be the king the true king, the perfect king, and perfect high priest, and supreme saviour of all. The last one, beloved, the wise men returned by a different road. The wise men were ordered to go back home by the way which they had come, that is, by way of Herod's palace. Herod's palace, the parties, the meals, the liquor and all the things that we so much enjoy in life. 
we will find him. After discovering Christ, people walk a different way. Wise people walk a spiritual king's highway. Wise people walk the way of holiness. Wise people walk in the pathway of peace and grace and bring Jesus Christ to be Lord of their lives. In, my, in conclusion, brothers and sisters, the wise men of the palace sought the Savior. They worshipped him as deity and gave him the very best they had. If you and I would be wise today, we would do likewise to present the Savior with our best deeds. He alone is worthy of our worship. He alone deserves the very best of our time, our energy, and our resources. Let us make the decision that we need to make today to follow that light, that star, leading us to Jesus, now and to all eternity. Amen. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to pray. Everything you are to us, O oh Lord God. Father, we come to you this morning with hearts who knows of your greatness, dear Lord God. Who this morning, O oh Heavenly Father, was reminded of just how great you are, O oh Lord God. We come before you with hearts, O oh Lord God, who are reminded this morning, O oh Lord, 
that you are the Alpha and the Omega in the beginning and the end. You are who is and was and is to come. You, O oh Lord God, are the one who sent your Son, O oh Lord God, a Son that was given to us, O oh Heavenly Father, whose name is Wonderful, whose name is Counselor, whose name is Mighty God, whose name is Eternal Father and Prince of Peace. You are the one, O oh Lord, who left your throne above to come down to earth, O oh Lord God, clothed in humanity, to dwell amongst us, so that we may know that God is with us. Thank you. Thank you that you are a mighty God. Thank you that we are always on your mind. Thank you that you are a miraculous, supernatural, loving, kind, faithful, gracious, merciful, God who loves us so much. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the messenger that brought the word, O oh Lord God. Thank you that you can use anyone, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you that you are the one who anoints us, dear Lord God, to bring a word to your people, O oh Heavenly Father. We ask you to bless me, O oh Lord God. Thank you for blessing him in all he does. And we ask that you continue to bless him, O oh Heavenly Father. Give him the strength, the wisdom, the insight, the understanding, O oh Lord God, to move this church forward, O oh Heavenly Father. To wake us up, O oh Lord God, so that we can become a community, a church, O oh Heavenly Father. Not just a church building, O oh Lord God, but a church who moves and walks, O oh Lord God, directed by you, O oh Heavenly Father, directed by your Holy Spirit, dear Lord God. A force to be known and reckoned with in this community, O oh Lord God. Not so that we may be admired or glorified, but so that your name may be glorified. You said, O oh Lord God, if we lift up your name, all men will come to you. And so that's what we want to do when we ask for that, O oh Lord God, that your spirit lives and works in each one of us, O oh Lord God, so that we may know the assignment we have at the Fleur of Congregational Church, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Father, that you have been with our church members. Thank you, Lord God, that you have comforted those who have lost lost ones in our in our church community, O oh Lord God, in our fellowship, Father. Close friends, O oh Lord God, who have become like family to us. Father, help us that Satan doesn't come in and destroy the fellowship that we have in our church, O oh Lord God. Help us, dear Lord God, to have one vision, one goal, O oh Lord God. And to move in spirit. And to look beyond what we see, O oh Lord God. To the hope and the glory that you have set before us. Wonderful Savior. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your healing. Thank you that you are with us every single day. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that we can encourage one another with your word every day, O oh Lord God. Thank you for all you are all you have been and all you always will be. I pray these things not because I'm worthy of it, but in that wonderful and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now to all eternity. Amen. Go in peace and see the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen.